Hello, this is Eric with BC Gurus, and this is part five of Web Apps, and this video is going to cover module tags. So when we're talking about module tags, we're talking about the, uh, the business catalyst tags that you can put in various places on your site, such as within a page or a template or a content holder. And uh, these tags will essentially uh, output your web app data, be that a list of items or an individual item or uh, the output necessary to show your items on a map. Uh, along with some other things. And uh, there are several uh, different tags within the web app uh, section of the module manager, which is what you're seeing here. And uh, we'll briefly cover all of these in this video, but for some of them, we're going to wait and go into details in uh, the next few videos. So let's jump into that and see what some of your options are when it comes to uh, displaying your web app data. So here on the back end of our site, we've created a page just called module tags. And this is just a demonstration of what some of the uh, different tags uh, look like. And when we're talking about a tag, we're talking about anything that uh, is within these curly braces, the open and close braces there, uh, that's going to be rendered as a tag. So all of this text will get replaced with the output of the module. And in this case, we're working with web apps. So uh, you can see here, there's a tag that allows you to uh, insert a count of items and that's what that looks like. Uh, these other ones are mostly different forms of the module underscore web apps tag. That's uh, really the workhorse of uh, web apps is that one tag. And depending on what you want for your display criteria, you'll have uh, different parameters for this tag, which are uh, specified by uh, doing the different uh, commas and filling in these values. Now, you don't have to remember all this or memorize that or, or really even understand what these numbers are. Um, there's a reference guide, uh, the modules quick reference. If you come over to that and come to web app modules, it will uh, show you what all of the different uh, arguments to this uh, tag are, and uh, it includes some information about specifically what that is. Uh, this is actually pretty handy. Um, but uh, besides just coming here and typing in uh, the tag out, uh, getting it exactly how it's supposed to be, you can see some of these require uh, some very specific numbers of commas in there that can be hard to remember. So, um, or even hard to get right if you know it. But uh, generally what you can do is use the actual module manager to select uh, what the proper tag is for your situation and what you want to do. So let's, uh, let's just go ahead and clear this out and uh, just start from scratch here to see what we've got. So this first option in the web app section of the module manager is just to display the total number of items for a specific web app. This is pretty straightforward. You would just click on that module. And when you do that, it's going to uh, give you some options here. So in this case, we want the number of items within a web app. And we would just want to display or choose which web app we're interested in and so you would select that and then click insert and when you click insert it's going to go ahead and fill in that module now in this case this number is the id of the web app in this case the author of the web app so that's uh, where that number comes from if you're curious um, so that's a very simple uh, module and all that's going to do is output a number on the page um, you can see that here, uh, there was one web app item and uh, that's what you get with that. So um, the next thing, if we come back to web apps again, and uh, let's just run through a couple of these. These first two are related to displaying items on a map, um, either because of search or a predefined criteria. We'll cover that in the mapping video. Um, this one will display a list of web app items submitted by the customer. So this is basically a list output it, but it's going to filter based on items uh, that the currently logged in customer has submitted. And again, we'll cover that in the user submitted video. Uh, the next one is just the simple display list of web app items. And this one is deceptively simple because this is uh, this is really the primary web apps output module and you can do more than just display a simple list. And uh, we'll cover that in detail in just a second. Um, these next uh, three are related to search in the input form. They aren't so much uh, module tags, so to speak. Actually, I guess search results is an actual module tag. But the uh, input form for customers and the search form, when you insert these on the page, 
um, they actually just insert the appropriate HTML code, as you can kind of see here. So it's not really a module tag, it's, it's just the code itself. And then, of course, you can come in and customize this to be laid out and only include the fields you're interested in. Uh, like I said, we'll cover that in uh, the related videos, uh, just pointing out that's where you would go to get those forms initially, and they're not actually tags. So let's, uh, let's jump in here and talk about the primary one we're interested in which is display list of web app items. So when you select the display list of web app items from the module manager you're gonna want to scroll up if you can't see it but it's gonna switch the view and pretty much in all situations the first thing you have to tell it is what web app, web app are you actually interested in. Now, you can see I have two different web apps on this site so I'm gonna go ahead and select the authors web app that I created which just contains a list of authors for various purposes and then it's gonna ask you for the criteria so if we open the criteria box you can see this is more than just a plain list. Uh, for instance, you could just choose one individual item, uh, all the items in this web app, uh, items in a specific category, just the most recent items, uh, an individual random item, and then the same thing, an individual random item, but this time it would be an item in a uh, out of one specific category. So let's just take a look at the all items one because that's uh, pretty uh, simple. You would simply select all items and then hit insert. And as you can see, when I do that, it's going to insert the tag. Now, a, a quick overview, just the web apps tag itself, module web apps, followed by the ID of the web app, and then the display criteria, which in this case, the lowercase a represents uh, that we want to only dis that we want to display all items. So uh, that's what that tag looks like. Now there are other options here because when you do that, it's just going to display all the items one after the other using your primary list template. And sometimes that's okay, but other times you need to go a little bit further. So uh, you can click the customize button, and you have a few other options. Probably one of the most important options out of here is this use backup template check box. When you select that option, um, it's going to use a slightly different form of the tag that indicates that the list view should use the backup list template as opposed to the primary list template. And uh, most of the, the uh, different options you have uh, that display lists of items will include this checkbox so you can toggle between uh, using the backup or the primary uh, depending on how you want to display your items on this specific page. Um, the next one you're probably interested in is how many results per page you want to output. Uh, the default here is 10 and if you had 20 items what would happen would be on the first page you would have a list of 10 items and it would generate some paging for you so you could do the previous next and then page one page two and it would create those links so that when the user clicked on them it would display the next set of 10 items um, Sometimes you're not going to have any items in your web app, and when that happens, uh, your list output will show a message just saying there are no items uh, on this list, and sometimes you want that, and sometimes you don't. And so if you don't want to include that uh, message, you can do the hide if empty uh, versus um, showing that message. Uh, some of the uh, the other options, the row length and the target frame, we don't use those as much, but you certainly can. Uh, the target frame basically determines uh, when it's generating links, it will try and add some special attributes to the link tag so that when someone clicks the details link, that link will open either in a new frame, um, a new page, same window, or the new window. The default is just uh, the same window, which is basically what would happen if it wasn't set. Um, we, uh, we generally take a little bit more control over our layouts, and so when we're creating the links, we'll specify 
this as as we see fit but you can try and set it here and a lot of times it'll do what you need very easily um, the row length uh, is another one of those things a lot of the times when we're uh, building layout templates for lists we'll control the row length uh, using more traditional CSS approaches but this will include some additional markup to attempt to uh, put more than one item on the same row so in this case if I specify uh, two items and uh, we'll go ahead and just uh, we'll switch this out to uh, two results per page or what we'll, we can do three and uh, just so you can see what the paging looks like and what happens when you put the row length option in there when you insert these you're gonna get again the same type of tag module web apps we want this web app we want to display all items and then it's specifying different parameters corresponding to these other options here and that's what these additional fields are and if you're curious how that works again recommend taking a look at the modules quick reference and it will explain what all these different parameters are used for um, so let's uh, update that and see what kind of options we have when we uh, preview this page and you can see what it's done is it's put two items on this row and uh, it's showing three items total on the first page and it's generated my paging links for me uh, next and uh, previous and it will page through those for you so let's just go through uh, this module uh, one more time just to give you an alternative uh, view of what some of these others look like. Again, we're going to display a list of items. We're going to select the author's web app. And uh, instead of using uh, just the all items option, we're going to tell it that we want all items in a specific category. And this time we're ha we have a third criteria we have to specify, which is what category we want to display items from. So I can do company for instance and uh, again I've got the same type of customization options whether or not to use the backup template or the primary and then um, we'll go ahead and just insert that and if you sometimes you may want to do more than one category so in that case you would just come up here choose another category hit insert and um, you can see a slightly different tag here so we're saying output the web apps from this uh, web app we want to display by category and then this is the ID of the category we want to display 14606 verse 14610 in this one so um, that's uh, pretty straightforward and I think you'll find that uh, just going through this module manager will be uh, pretty comprehensive when trying to figure out what uh, the different options are feel free to experiment but I think uh, that covers the idea behind all this pretty well and then finally for those cases when you're just trying to output one single item again you're going to use the display list of items even though that's uh, somewhat contradictive but uh, it's still a list of items uh, you pick your web app and then this time you would just pick an individual item and uh, you could do a single individual item a random item or a random item from a specific category and uh, so we'll just do the individual item and this time we just have to pick the specific item we want to output and then hit uh, insert down here now again even with this individual item you can still customize it uh, some of these don't really make that much sense uh, but the important one you might want to use is the use backup template because what this does is it doesn't uh, output the details of one item it, um, it instead outputs a list of items that only has one item on the list and so that's where you may want to use the backup list template even when you're outputting a uh, single item and uh, so you can put a, a web app on the page like that and just so you can see what I mean it's uh, it's not outputting the details of this web app it's just using the primary list view to output one single item so sometimes that can be handy as well